Well, when you live away from Singapore, there are some things that you really miss, and food is definitely one of them. Especially here in Switzerland, eating out is so expensive, and I very quickly had to learn how to cook to survive. Every time I come back to Singapore, I would smuggle things like curry paste, tom yum paste, or even my favorite snack, tapioca chips. One day I miss kaya so much that I decided to make it myself. Kaya reminds me of my mom. Back in the day, she used to cook her own kaya and even sell them. I would be roped in to help, and I also get to eat any leftovers from the day. My mom and I. We eat it together with toast for breakfast and even tea time. Baking itself, with those rich smells and tastes, is really a trigger for those good memories. Pandan Treasures was started when I was out of job. For what? Trying to figure out my life out. So, oh well, I just thought, let's try something new. I started producing small batches of kaya at first, just for myself and some close friends. For me, it's like a passion project. I spend some time after working hours and mostly burning my weekends baking from morning to night. Sometimes I barely break even, but it's so worth it when I see the appreciative comments from my customers. For many of them, the taste is a small but important connection back home, and for me, there's really a pure sense of satisfaction knowing that it has helped them ease a bit of their home stress. Selling something like pandan kaya in Switzerland is not easy. I remember making a little cart in the supermarket to allow people to try my new pandan brioche. At the beginning, I realized the Swiss people are rather fearful of the color green. It reminds them of matcha or even wasabi. My little trick was to fuse the cultures together to allow locals to warm up to pandan kaya through things they are already familiar with. Hence, the reason of replacing normal bread with brioche. But sometimes, once in a while, you see a fellow Singaporean. Actually, more often than not, you hear them first, and it's magical and quite moving to see their reactions. When they come across this little bottle of homemade kaya, very quickly, the social barriers are down. Singlish starts popping up. It's very special, almost like catching up with a long lost best friend. Over the past four to five years, I found that there's this WhatsApp group full of Singaporeans in Switzerland. Name and the Pandan Treasures website will be passed around in this WhatsApp group, and sales have been great. Through my baking, I have managed to connect to a community of Singaporeans within Switzerland, and would sometimes meet up with a very close knit group in Zurich, near where I live. Step one: dress for the occasion. Step two. Welcome your friends, laugh at their jokes, catch up on each other's lives. Step three: review your surprise pandan kaya pastries for dessert. Pass it to a daring friend to try. Step four: watch their reaction upon tasting. Remember, capture it with your phone. Step five: if the first taste test goes well, offer it to the rest of the Step six: Explain what pandan kaya is. 
share in each other's cultures. I would return to Singapore once a year. It is almost like my chance to restock. Singapore changes so fast. But the good thing is, the food here doesn't change. I would head out to the nearest hawker centre to eat my favourites. Curry chicken, bar chow mee, satay, pork and prawn mee, roast pork rice, nasi lemak. Being overseas for so long makes you miss these small things that you might have taken for granted. I can't really explain it, but it brings so much joy.